<laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Anna Lu from the College of Design, and today we are on Civic Innovation Day, and we have very special guests for you today. We have Engineering Without Borders, so I would like to kindly invite our two students to present themselves and introduce a little bit about the project. Hi, my name is Joe Kim, and I am a junior in industrial engineering, and this year I'm serving as the president of Engineers Without Borders. Last year, I was the vice president of engineering for one of our projects, the clinic project, and I traveled on the travel team in the winter of 2019 and 2020. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Mario Kima. I'm a sophomore in material science and engineering. Um, I'm currently serving as the vice president of fundraising, and I was the events chair last year um, in charge of our big fundraiser we have each year, um, Gathering for Ghana. Thank you. That's great. And um, I'm Karen Kearns. I'm Entrepreneur in Residence for Iowa State, Director of Innovation Programming. And I am so glad to have Mary and Joseph here today. Uh, Mary and Joseph, I met them when we were working on fundraising opportunities and how to position themselves as, in fundraising. And also I worked with John Hanley in Engineers Without Borders and um, got introduced through John and also Reed Duncan. So it's really nice to have these young people here engaged and invested. And what I might ask you is, can you tell me a little bit about who is in the Engineer Without Borders Club and why do they join? Joseph. We have a variety of different majors in Engineers Without Borders. And even though we're called Engineers Without Borders, it really is an organization that is open to anybody that's interested in helping um, people that are in a developing world to get access to needed resources. So we're currently serving um, our partner community of Ulo, Ghana. Um, and because of this, there is a lot of work that needs to be done, not only in the engineering side of things, but also with just communications and marketing and fundraising. Um, and because of this, we have reached out to basically the entire uh, college. Over the past year, we've really been making an effort to try to expand our audience outside of just engineers. Traditionally, we have been a club filled with a lot of uh, mechanical engineers and also civil engineers, but in the past couple of years, we have been working to expand not only different majors in the, in the College of Engineering, but also different majors to the entire campus. Um, so anybody is welcome as long as they are passionate about helping out other people in the world. Mary, why do you think students are so passionate and interested in joining a club like Engineers Without Borders? Um, Engineers Without Borders is truly a unique club. Um, you get real life experience in engineering as well as like opportunities to fundraise and to put on events and to really make an impact in the community around us, but also in ULO. Um, I just think, I know personally I joined because it's not directly correlated to my major necessarily, but it's the cause and the people you meet and like the effect you have and like everyone you meet within the club and then within ULO and just the experience you get from it. That's great. Uh, can you share a little bit about what it might look like for a student? Uh, what types of things might they do and how might they work in the club and beyond the club? Joseph? Yeah, so I can talk more about like the week to week, I think technical side of things. So basically during any given week, we meet as different groups that are all working on a variety of projects. We have five or six projects right now, which are helping um, solve various issues in the community. One of them is like designing a clinic that will be built over the next four or five years. Um, and because of this, they're broken up into specific groups that are solving the, that major Project. So we have a layout group, a structures group, a roof group, uh, sanitation, and power. Um, and each of them focus on a specific, a specific aspect of the clinic. So on a week-to-week -week basis, that means that they are looking into creating different designs for the clinic or act, just looking into more of the technical side of things. Um, I think that there's also different groups, too, that are more uh, not as engineering focused, like fundraising and communications. And um, I think this is where Mary uh, is, le she's leading one of these groups and she can talk more about that. 
Yeah, so our fundraising, our membership, and our um, communications groups are really where we can expand the most, I think, um, personally, in the next few years, and hopefully bring in more majors and a variety of experienced people um, from different colleges so that they can help us kind of build up our fundraising and as well as our like communications. Um, uh, fundraising is very much planning. We focus a lot on grants um, and putting on our big event, Gathering for Ghana, which is a auction type where we also give a presentation on what the club is currently doing and updating on the impact we have and are making in Ghana. Um, and then communications focuses on reaching out to like the different communities and keeping the school updated and focusing on like the Instagram as well as just other aspects of the club. And membership is really the pull into our club, getting new students, new minds um, and everything, as well as trying to keep club membership up by doing fun activities. Like we had a ledges trip, which was super fun. We went to Ledges State Park, um, as well as we did a virtual fun, um, like social event, which we're, where we did an escape room. So. Wow, that's great. And so if I'm a new student, where do I start? How do I reach you? Um, all of our new members go through a program that we have set up called um, Noob, which is New Engineers Without Borders. Um, and that kind of gets them set up. They hear presentations from each team so they can kind of pick where they would like to go or where they would feel most com comfortable. The club is very versatile and you can move around to wherever you want. So like you're not stuck in one place if you end up finding that it's not really what you wanna be doing or where you wanna focus. That's great. Let's talk about um, the interaction with people in Ulu. What are you noticing about the impact? Because historically you've made a big difference in that community. Can you talk about some of the impacts that you've had in that community specifically? Yeah, definitely. Um, because Engineers Without Borders has been working with ULO for the past few years, um, we are on the we are the team that is actually able to see the impact that previous years have really had on this community. So a couple of years ago, we just finished our water distribution project, um, and before this a lot of people had to wait four, five or six hours just to get water every single day. And a lot of the time this um, was the job of the woman and also the children. Um, so a lot of students had to do this, especially uh, female students. Um, but after we finished the water distribution system, this no longer was an issue. And it cut down the times that they had to wait from hours to basically just minutes. Um, so the year that we came back, and we were going to monitor the system, we kind of asked them about what the impact had been and what they had noticed. Um, and on the surface, it was basically just like, the health has gotten better, everybody's happier and the whatnot. But for the teachers, they also reported that grades had gone up significantly in just that one year that we had um, come back. Um, and just seeing that impact was just major. Uh, we, we really were inspired by this. And if that was just one year, we really understood that like moving forward, this is something that was making a big impact. And it's ultimately what inspired us to take on this next big project, which is the clinic project, um, just to be able to see the impact that we've had on this community and really just how they've been able to thrive because of it. Yeah, I, uh, I just am so impressed. And I just wanna say, I'm so proud of our engineering students and beyond, right? Borders beyond the engineering mm -hmm. discipline and the work that you do that is really making a deliverable difference in the world. And I think that's one thing that kind of distinguishes our Iowa State experience. I might end on a question uh, for you as students of engineering at Iowa State, uh, what resources and support have you received in terms of like coaching, mentoring, but also just training from engaged staff, uh, faculty, staff, industry people, how has that helped you? I think on the technical side of things, we are working with like Engineers Without Borders USA, and they're able to provide a lot of resources from just professionals that are 
um, in the national organization and they've had a lot of international experience. So really just being able to help us out with those specific projects. I think ISU specifically though, we have two really, really great mentors. Um, one is in the, uh, is a mechanical engineering professor and the other is in uh, ABE, which is agriculture and biosystems engineering. Um, and they are just phenomenal. They travel, with, one of them travels with us over winter break for three weeks and just really lends his expertise and is able to give a lot of like, um, just facts about the culture and how to navigate that because a lot of us just don't have that experience. Um, and just their feedback on a week to week basis where they really are able to just say if we're going in the right direction and provide that um, advice about, about how we are navigating between these cultures um, is something that has really helped a lot of student leaders grow and also just continue to become, um, I think, better people and better people that are focused on a like service mentality. Yeah. Um, there's also just a lot of resources with like the Student Innovation Center. They're promoting um, our work by helping set up a display, which looks really good, that is just saying what our mission is and helping to draw in a lot of other people and even doing things like funding um, a 3D printed design of the, the clinic, which will be displayed in the Student Innovation Center. So just having those resources has really helped our organization grow and also just be able to kind of show the world what we are doing. That's great. Mary, any last comments? Yeah, um, one thing I wanted to add that on top of the faculty um, and EWV, or EWV USA, um, our alumni, you can really see the impact that the club has made on our alumni. Um, we actually just had an alumni panel, so they came back and they talked to us about what we're doing, but also like what they're doing. And it's amazing to see how many are still involved with Engineers Without Borders on the national level and just where that, how that like kind of changed their life course and the impact it had on them. Um, also just the faculty, once again, Joe already said it, but they're amazing. Our mentors are truly like the best advice givers. Uh, they, you can talk to them about anything, any problems. They know everything inside and out. Yep, and, and there, what are the names of your mentors, your club mentors? Dr. Dirk Meyer and Mr. Owen Kolstad. Fabulous, fabulous. And for the future then, um, and closing the loop here because we started with civic innovation and social innovation, where do you go, change makers? What do you want to do next? And any of you? Ah, oh, this is a really would have thought that would have been a hard question. Go ahead, I Mary. Could, I could go. Um, right now, you know, obviously not completely sure. I'm still a sophomore, yeah. um, but I'm definitely looking into going into grad school. Um, I'd like to do something on an international level too, probably continuing with Engineers Without Borders as well. Um, they have different chapters in each city. So that's awesome that you can still be involved. Um, but so that's far- a very good one. No, it's a very good one. It's like to continue where, where to be and what, where is the place that you can actually continue the work. It could be academic or it could be like hands on the field and go and do field studies. That's good. And for you, yeah. Joseph? Yeah, I'm also thinking about grad school. I think, so on a more immediate level, uh, I think going back to ULO would be really, really fun just because I was able to travel a year ago and just be able to see the project start to be implemented. That's definitely something I wanna do. And then after I graduate, probably grad school and just, I think the intersection between industrial engineering and healthcare um, is just something that really interests me. And that's also one of the reasons why I was drawn to our clinic project um, in Engineers Without Borders. Right. I I'm so, I'm so grateful for the time that you took today. Thanks for sharing it with us, your great big adventures. One final thing I might ask, how many people do you have in your club? A little over 70. Yeah, I thought so. It's 70, 70? Yes. Oh yes, they're a big group. And uh, I think growing every day. And we are happy with the Innovation Center and across the university to support and promote you. I love working with you on the fundraising part. That's going to be very exciting. We're in for a big adventure and we look forward to watching what happens next with you. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much for interviewing us. Thank you so much. Bye.